What is up everybody, Roy here, and today we are reviewing Hyrule Warriors, a game I was not excited for when it was first announced. In fact, I resented the game. You can actually see my early reactions in very early videos, but I came around after a few trailers, and I bought the game day one. And how did it shape up? Was it worth the day one purchase, or was it just another hack and slash with just repetitiveness and not much to do? Well, let's find out in this week's review. Zelda Hyrule Warriors was announced, I was pretty skeptical. I mean, $60 for this Zelda spin-off? I wasn't really impressed at all. I thought it was the end of Zelda. Yeah, I was one of those people. But then, new trailers came in and I, my stupid brain finally realized it was a spin-off and everything clicked. I bought it day one and oh my gosh. It was fun. That's what this game is. It's not perfection, it's not horrible, it's really fun. It's a hack and slash. I mean, what more do you want from the definition of this game? It's a Zelda hack and slash. Very, this is the fan service that we've been wanting for so long. All these different Zelda characters mashed into one awesome game where we all beat up our favorite enemies. So, I mean, was this game just so low on content that it didn't provide anything, or did it have too much of the same content, as many people have said it has. Well, that's what we're here to find out today. So, without further ado, let the review begin. I have no idea why, but I really enjoy the story in Hyrule Warriors. I mean, it's so simple, but it's like, it's like as if Nintendo was owned by Disney and Disney made this game. Now, I'm not saying I want mouse ears on Smash Bros. or anything, but the story in this game, I don't know why, I just really like it. So, for those of you that don't own Hyrule Warriors yet, then here's a basic rundown of how the story goes down. So, there's this young wizard, wizard, wizard S, it's a wizard that's a girl, like, I forget the correct term, if there is one for that. And she basically guards the Triforce. And she is in love with Link. But she is shown the future where Link ends up with Zelda. She gets pissed off that she's not going to end up with Link. So she turns evil, uses the Triforce to create an army to attack Hyrule, as in attacking Zelda, I guess. And basically Zelda has a nightmare of all this before it even happens. So she's like, oh crap, gotta find the hero of time. She's searching through, and while she's searching for the hero, it all happens. Monsters are assaulting Hyrule Castle. What I love about this game is we've never really seen an assault on Hyrule Castle, except in Twilight Princess, which may I add, that scene was awesome with Zant just invading. Anyways, this, you feel the stakes. I mean, in the cutscene, you see millions upon millions of just henchmen marching towards the castle, and you're just like, oh crap. I mean, it's awesome. I love the cinematics in this, we'll talk about that in presentation, but they really make you feel the stakes of how how hard you're gonna have to fight in order to secure the safety of Hyrule. It makes you feel like you're in an actual war. Anyways, she, Link runs out even though he's a trainee and he's not supposed to run out, but he does it anyways to help save his kingdom. And that's it without getting into spoiler territory. I mean, it's a simple story, but if you guys are wondering how all these universes collide, they have a good explanation for it. Um, I'm not gonna spoil how it happens, but it's a pretty simple, fun story, and I'm really, I really like it. I don't know why, I just, I just do. I mean, the story works for what the game is. It's simple. Hyrule Warriors is a hack and slash, meaning that in five missions or six missions, you're gonna look like this, huh? So it's the same thing over and over. 
okay. Or you're gonna look like this. It's so much fun. Just keep mashing the buttons. This is, I'm almost there, I'm almost done. See me, I'm somewhere in the middle. I felt the gameplay was repetitive, but I kept playing because every mission you would unlock a new combo or muso attack or a new character, and because you kept unlocking stuff to help you do better in game, it would want make you want to play more and therefore addicting. But the gameplay is basically repetitive. It's all button mashing, hacking, and slashing. Well, that's what a hack and slash is, and. As long as this game does it right, I forgive it for that, you know? I mean, by the end you do feel a little outdone, but, you know, uh, it, it, it is a little overdone, but most of the time it feels just right. And one mode I want to talk about is the adventure mode. This is where I spent most of my time because I really love the old NES Zelda, and this was just a really fun thing, a little, really fun easter egg to do for Zelda fans. Basically. You could find hidden items and stuff like that on the NES map, and then you would go to a, into an attack, and then you would do a mission while attacking. And this would be the best way to unlock new items and unlock new stuff. Now, 100% in this game, as our dear old, dear old friend the completionist has showed us, is really, really hard with not a lot of payoff. So, I mean, I don't know. I didn't complete adventure mode. I did most of it. But I never completed it. But it is very fun, especially for the old classic Zelda fans. And I love the story aspect how you can start to play as the bad guys. You come in, you're like Gan and Zan and Girahim, and you're just like, uh uh, we're not gonna have this. We're happening now. And like, there's so many characters in this game. I mean, you can play as Darunia, Zora, I'm pretty sure that's her name. Ruto, I'm sorry. Ooh, I ruined her name. <laughs> You can play as Ruto, you can play as Darunia, you can play as Ganondorf, you can play as Girahim, you can play as Zant. I mean, there's so many characters that you can play as in this game, I can't count. But it's really fun, there's a lot of variation as to what to do in this game, and I find that, that that's perfect for a hack and slash. It's still the same gameplay we've come to love from hack and slash games. It's still repetitive, but still has a lot of variation to its repetitiveness. And that's really awesome. And I can't believe the people at Koei Tecmo have managed to do that. You've been watching this review, right? Like, you've seen how amazing these graphics look, right? Like, the cutscenes look like they're out of movies. You've seen all this, right? No? Alright, I'll explain it anyways. So, the graphics in this game look absolutely outstanding. It really shows the power the Wii U actually has under the hood. Not many other games have done this before, but this game just looks so beautiful. I mean, you feel very immersed because of just how beautiful everything looks. The environments look real, the characters look real, everything just looks really cool in their own way. The presentation is just amazing. It's so good. Now let's talk about the music. The music is always rock renditions of songs that are from our childhood or from Skyward Sword or from Twilight Princess. Just from all the different Zelda games assorted into one masterpiece of the soundtrack. The soundtrack in this game is amazing. I listened to it before the game even came out just for the sake of listening to it. That's how good the soundtrack is. I think the only other game I've done that with is Ocarina of Time and Xenoblade. I mean, it, the, uh, the soundtrack in the game is amazing, and I really love it. In the end, Hyrule Warriors is a fun game. Yeah, it's repetitive, but I had a blast playing it. I mean, this game right here is just fun. It gets really repetitive, especially later in the game, and you find yourself a little bored by the end. So, because of that, Hyrule Warriors gets a 7 out of 10. I wish I could have given it more because of all the characters, all the items you can unlock, all the different weapons. It's really fun to find new weapon stuff, but 
it just got repetitive by the end of the game, and Adventure Quest was really fun, but same thing, halfway through, it gets repetitive. But, I feel like this game doesn't really work its best on console. While the graphics look great, I feel like the gameplay, gameplay style would be much better on a handheld. But that's never gonna happen, right? Right? I mean, a guy can hope. Oh, I see how it is. I see how it is. You just want to take all the money, don't we, Nintendo?